Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today Unreal Engine 5.4 was just released. Now Unreal Engine 5.4 was first previewed back at GDC, so we know a lot of what is coming. And at the core of it, the big thing about this update is the new animation feature. It's actually kind of amazing how much stuff Epic Games are moving into Unreal Engine. Eventually you may not need a DCC tool like Max Maya or Blender. It may actually be that all of these tools are actually built in, because you're going to see there is a ton of new animation functionality built into the 5.4 release that just didn't exist before, but of course we have all kinds of other improvements as well. Things like uh, heterogeneous volume, so now you can have smoke that casts shadows as an example, and uh, nanite tessellation, etc. There's a ton in this particular release. So head on over to everyone's favorite application, the Epic Games Launcher, and uh, you will find 5.4 is now available for release. If you had the beta version, an update will be available. Otherwise, go ahead and download it this way. 5.4, now available for use. So what we're going to do is jump into the uh, release blog and then get into some of the release notes and see what is new in this particular version. So a quick run through the 5.4 release blog. Uh, you're going to find top level details of what is new here. They have done a highlights video of everything. But as I said earlier on, the big thing here is the new animation tools. You're going to be amazed at just how much stuff has been put in here. Do keep in mind, some of these things are going to be labeled as experimental. That doesn't guarantee that it's going to exist in future versions. It is, in fact, an experiment. But generally, things go experiment beta release. So anything experimental is brand new to 5.4 but nowhere near ready for production. So just something to be aware of here. So we got new tools for uh, rigging an animation audience. So substantial updates to Unreal Engine's built-in animations tool sets, enabling you to quickly, easily, and enjoyably rig characters and author animation directly inside of the engine without having to round trip out to other tools. So there is this new experimental contr modular control rig. You can build animation rigs from understandable mo modular parts instead of complex granular graphs. Well, automatic retargeting makes it easier to get great results while reusing bipedal character animations there are also extensions to the skeletal editor and a suite of new deformer functions to make the deformer graph more accessible. So you can see you're basically building your rig out of bits and pieces, like using a virtual Lego block instead of these complex graphs. So uh, this is experimental, but hopefully it lasts in. Uh, they've also made some improvements on the authoring front. Uh, so includes experimental new gizmos, reorganized animation details, upgrade improvements to the constraint system, a new layer control rig features that drastically simplify adding animations on top of animation clips. Meanwhile, Sequencer, Unreal Engine's non-linear non animation editor, gets significant makeover, better readability, and improved usability in several aspects of the Sequencer tree, along with other new features in this release, they've added keyframe scriptability, uh, and then animation gameplay, motion matching, uh, previously was an experimental feature, is now considered production ready. So like I said, the things go from experimental to generally beta to production ready, but you can see you can now use motion, motion matching. Uh, it's been battle tested in Fortnite Battle Royale, uh, running uh, all 100 characters plus NPCs on mobile and consoles. Uh, it's an expandable next-gen framework for animation features, includes uh, instead of using complex logic to select and transition uh, animation clips at runtime, it relies on certain a relatively large database of captured animation using the current motion information of the characters in the game as a key. By the way, uh, they actually released um, a huge animation library. They did this at the GTC as well. I think there's about 600 pre-made animations in there that you could just basically mix and match and blend together using this new um, motion matching library, which is pretty cool. So they focused on making animator-friendly tool set, robust performant and memory scalable, as well as adding a suite of debugging tools. On the game frame front, they also added Choosers, a much requested tool that enables you to use game context to drive animation selection. A uh, system can use both variables to inform selections and set variables based on those selections to inform back to gameplay logic. And on the rendering side of things, we always get improvements to rendering. One here, um, experimental new tessellation feature. So basically, if you have a big patch of ground that doesn't have a lot of detail, Nanite can automatically tessellate that surface so that you can have uh, fine details such as cracks and bumps added at render time without altering the original mesh. Um, also, uh, software variable rate shading via Nanite compute materials uh, brings to substantial performance gains. Also, support for spline mesh workflows uh, for creating like roads and rivers and so on, stuff like that. In addition, a new option to disable UV interpolation enables vertex animated textures to be used for world position offset animations. Effectively, this means that Anim to Texture plug is now works with Nanite geometry. Uh, we also have improvements to temporal super resolution, uh, stability and performance enhancements to per to ensure a predictable output. Uh, they've also added a new visualization mode to make it easier to fine tune and debug uh, temporal super resolutions um, 
behavior as you're going. Uh, we've got improvements to the rendering performance. So people targeting 60 frames per second invest significant efforts into improving rendering performance in Unreal Engine 5.4. Includes refactoring the systems to enable a greater degree of parallelization, as well as adding GPU instance culling to hardware ray tracing, which also now benefit from additional primitive types and an optimized path tracer. Further optimizations have been made to shader compilations, resulting in a notable improvement to project cook times. Uh, this is for people working uh, movie uh, render graph. This is for people using uh, Unreal Engine to make films and that kind of work. By the way, there is another interesting side point with this release. Unreal Engine 5.4 is also the release with the new pricing structure. I did a video about that elsewhere, but if you're using it to make films, uh, there is now basically a fee attached if you're not using it to make games. Uh, do check that video out, but this is the version where that uh, new EULA and fee will take effect. So if you're using it for movies, definitely one of those things you wish to know about. Um, so the MRG or the movie render graph is a new node based architecture enables users to set up graphs to render a single shot or design them to scale across multiple shot workflows for large teams of artists. Uh, includes render layers, a long requested feature that offers the ability to easily generate high quality elements for post compositing, such as separating foreground and background elements with support for both the path tracer and the deferred renderer. Uh, AI and machine learning tools. So uh, the neural network engine moves from experimental to beta. Like I said, it generally goes experimental beta production. So that's why motion matching was a little weird in that regard. Uh, support for in-editor and runtime applications. Uh, the NME enables developers to load and efficiently run their pre-trained neural network models. So uh, example use cases include tooling, animation, rendering, and physics, each with different needs in terms of platform. And model support addresses these separate or these disparate needs by providing a common API enabling easy swapping of backends as required. Um, developer iteration, this is actually some pretty cool stuff. You can now actually have the uh, DDC or the derived data cache hosted on cloud storage systems. Uh, you can also have it basically distributed around the world and have it automatically pick the most appropriate location for you. So you can host this up on an Azure cloud or AWS. Um, so if you want to host your DDC and share it between your team, this is an option that's out there. Also sees enhancements for local DDC, which now uses the Unreal Zen storage server architecture, allowing improved data conditioning performance, faster editor load times, play in editor workflows, greater control over cache rights eviction, and data deduplication. Uh, so also introduces beta in 5.3. This is now production ready is multi-process cooking, uh, enables developers converting content from internal UE formats to platform specific formats to leverage additional CPU and memory usage, uh, significantly reducing the time it takes to get cooked output from build farm or on local workstations. And they also introduced the Unreal Build Accelerated, a scalable distributed compilation solution for C++, which is weird because they had live++ before. So I don't know where you, Unreal Build Accelerator fits in that area, uh, but it's used in conjunction with the Unreal Build Tool or Unreal Horde's remote execution system to accelerate build compilation times. Currently a beta feature uh, in this release, UBA supports Windows OS for C++ compilation jobs. Native Mac OS and Linux support are included as experimental, along with process idle detection and shader compilation. The way you should read all of this is faster C++ builds, which I think everybody would be happy with, but especially Windows people, because it looks like uh, Linux and uh, Mac OS are gonna be lagging a little bit behind. Um, Motion design mode. Uh, so this is for collection for making like high end 2D animated displays in some ways. It's sort of like um, Flash in some extent built into Unreal Engine. Uh, so developed in conjunction with production testing and feedback from leading broadcasters, dedicated mode is engineered to provide an elevated user experience and sustain productivity for motion designers. It offers a comprehensive suite of tools, including 3D cloners, effectors, modifiers, animators, and more. Uh, some improvements on the uh, virtual production side of things, including new apps and so on. Um, studios using Linux will also benefit from editor stability improvements on that particular platform. This is another biggie there. Uh, and I don't think this is just for Linux, but this is definitely an addition for Linux, is there is now ray tracing support on Vulkan Render. Previously, it was Direct3D12 only, which obviously gives you, and Metal. Uh, so that obviously gives you a bit of an issue when you're on a Linux platform, uh, but this should apply to Windows as well. So if you want to check out ray tracing on Vulkan, it is now there in experimental format. Uh, improvements to Colossus Simulation, including a new USD importer for bringing stuff in from, say, Marvelous Designer, and much, much more. And as I mentioned earlier on, the new licensing is in effect for Unreal Engine Twin Motion and Reality Capture. Um, so this is one of those things you'll notice. Also, if you come into uh, the Epic's Games Launcher, you'll actually notice there is a Reality Capture tab there now. 
Uh, I think Twin Motion was already there. I'm not 100% certain, uh, but the licensing of those have changed. Definitely something you're going to want to be aware of because it is 5.4 where those licensing options have changed, in fact. And then on top of that, we get into the full-blown release notes. Now, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail here because, quite frankly, um, there's, there's a lot. It's actually kind of staggering how much Unreal packs into each release. Like, it just so much here. It's pretty amazing the rate of improvement going on. Again, a big area of focus here, though, is the new inbuilt animation tools um, have been added here. Again, new gizmos for working with things, um, retargeting tools in there, and so on. So if you're working on the animated side of things, there's definitely a lot of new improvements here, including this new modular control rig experiment in there. Um, We've got a Deformer Graph Libraries, uh, and then Skeletal Editor is also now a beta. This was first released, I think, in 5.3 before. So the amount of actual functionality for editors without having to actually go outside of the tool, it's pretty staggering. And then again, we have these new motion matching. Uh, and there is also that giant library of motion matching um, data out there. Again, I think it was about 600 animations that they had. That is available for download as well. Uh, but this is a new way of doing animations a whole lot easier. And again, they've battle tested it with the uh, Fortnite uh, battle royale stuff so it is actually working which is pretty cool again improvements to the rendering uh so the tessellation is kind of neat so you can actually add uh detail on um you can have it automatically tessellate a low detail map on nanite uh and um add in you know cracks and crevices and that kind of stuff where you couldn't do that before uh, other improvements to nanites as well the, the spline mesh we mentioned earlier on orthographic camera rendering in beta format uh, and this isn't even touched. This blows my mind they didn't cover this because they covered it pretty heavily in GDC. Heterogeneous volumes, uh, deferred rendering is experimental. So now you're actually going to have it. So let's see this right here. Your smoke and fire simulations, etc., can now cast shadows and so on. So you can do some really neat stuff with that as well. Again, improvements to rendering and cook times. Uh, Vulcan as an experimental support. Uh, hardware ray tracing improvements. This is another big one that a lot of people have been waiting for. Large world coordinates on the GPU. So this allows you to create your world from 21 kilometers up to 88, uh, let's see, million. Yeah, 88 million kilometers in size. So if you're making a galaxy scale project, uh, this is definitely going to be a useful thing for you. Uh, yeah, and I'm just kind of skimming through what is here now. Um, and there is an absolute ton in this particular release, so much so that it's amazing. Like, like Material Designer, this thing here, didn't even get mentioned in the TLDR version of it. Uh, it's an intuitive and user-friendly layer stack providing seamless experience for building complex materials on the fly. So it's sort of, and this is a little strange because they own um, Quixel, where they make a product called Mixer, which has sort of been like missing in action for a while. Well, Material Designer is looking a whole lot like Mixer, in my opinion. So I'm curious if this is ultimately what, what Mixer is going to turn into. But it allows you to mix different materials together to quickly create things, which is pretty cool. And then you apply effects to those as well. Um, yeah, so that is... And then, again, you've got these primitives that you can use with it. It's really kind of looking like Mixers here. Another big one here is there is now an SVG importer. Uh, which doesn't even get mentioned before. Improvements to the text 3D improvements as well. It's, it's again, pretty staggering. The things that are in the release notes that don't even get mentioned in the other side of things. I don't really cover the virtual processing stuff here. There's a lot of dedicated channels for uh, motion picture work with uh, Unreal Engine. I just, again, most of my audience isn't that into it, but obviously there is a bunch of improvements there. And it just kind of keeps going and going and going. Uh, improvements to, uh, so Niagara Fluids is now a beta here. Uh, so they added the following improvements to Niagara Fluids. So improved surfacing and rendering for 2D liquids, uh, 2D gases, uh, Fourier transform based uh, pressure solver and cubic interpolation, support for 3D gases, 2D liquids, two way uh, coupled simulations with GPU particles, caching support, improvements to chaos destruction, chaos uh, ML clothing stuff. Uh, it's uh, just so much here. Uh, so uh, that's the 5.4 release. As you can see, we got stuff improvements to the procedural generation stuff here as well. Uh, platform specific improvements in here, for various different uh, platforms. Uh, Lumen on mobile in experimental format. So if you want to have the Lumen render on like an Android device, that is actually uh, in the works. Uh, Apple Vision Pro support is here an experimental version as well for the six people making um, Vision Pro apps out there. Improvements to their meta sound system. 
And their modeling tools, like I said, they're moving more and more technology in-house into Unreal Engine, and they just keep improving as well. So better UV tools, um, new bevel tools, extruding tools, and so on. It's actually, I think I'm gonna do a video in, in the near future about how much you can actually do in Unreal Engine from like model, texture, animate using just Unreal Engine. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that. Also have this beta now of uh, geometry scripting, a bunch of improvements there. Uh, so, that's going to open up a whole new world of opportunities as well. And yeah, that's kind of where I'm going to stop, even though there are a ton of other improvements here. New uh, GLTF extensions in place. It just, like, here, here gives you an idea of the full release notes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, these releases are staggering just how much they actually fit in. I'm still scrolling, by the way. A lot of that is like smaller fixes and so on, but it gives you an idea of just how much they pack into these particular releases. Uh, Unreal Engine 5.4 is now available. All kinds of new features. Again, at the heart of it, a lot of it is around those new animation tools, but as you saw from the full phone release notes, there is a ton to this release. And I'm curious, what do you think of Unreal Engine in general, the development process they're going with, them moving more and more tools into the engine itself? Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.